There are three main options for making plastic parts. Machining is the traditional method, but it's time consuming, error prone, and you need expensive machinery. 3D printers are on the rise, and they're great for um, making one offs, prototypes, or very small runs, but the printing can take many hours for each object, and 3D printers are not cheap. A plastic injection moulding machine makes parts by injecting molten plastic into moulds. Once you have a mould you can make high quality parts very quickly and you can make lots of them. So injection moulding is the way to go for medium to large runs or if you're just fascinated with the process. But of course these machines can be large and very expensive. In recent years though some hobbyist machines, machines which you can put on your, your bench top have uh, become available. This machine is from LNS Technologies in the USA. It's their 150A and it costs $1,500. Only available in the USA though. This is Gallum's machine. It is available in the UK. I'll put the link to it down below. 2495, not cheap. And this is Travin's TP1 2750. I'll put the link below too. Well, these were all outside our budget and we like a challenge so. We thought, could we build our own plastic injection moulding machine? Well, it turns out the answer was yes, and this is our machine. Actually, this is our third iteration. There are two uh, pieces of scrap lying around, um, which are testimonies to our experience. Um, but anyway, here's what we came up with. The frame is made of one inch box section, three millimeter steel, welded all round, so it's extremely strong, painted in black hammerite. We actually bought welding equipment and learned to weld purely for this project. Um, although we were competent welders when this was made, so there's nothing wrong with the welding on this, but I wouldn't want to show you some of the welding we did while we were learning. So the whole thing is very, very sturdily built. You can apply very large forces on the drawing bar. Uh, you're not going to break it. It's not going to bend or snap. It sits on four nylon feet to protect the paintwork from the workshop environment it sits nice and solidly and it won't scratch. This is showing the um, the main mechanical element of the injection molder. You can see the piston um, and the, the pull bar and a, uh, a linkage mechanism there. The piston is mild steel. There's a return spring which pushes the handle back up when you stop pulling it down which gives you clear access to the barrel which I'll show you shortly. There are two steel, uh, three steel pins, all of which are removable. Um, there's an 8mm nylon nut uh, on the other side of those pins. And it, that's 4mm plate there at the back, so again, extremely solid. Now there is a minor issue with the design of this linkage. Because of the way the spring preloads the pivots, um, you, when you pull down on the bar, you need to push it very slightly towards this linkage system in order to relieve a slight binding. Once that's done it pulls as smooth as silk. It's not a major issue but it's something you need to be aware of. This is the hot bit, the heart of the machine. Firstly that the barrel itself is stainless steel, 303 stainless steel. It's 60 millimeters in diameter. The internal diameter is about 20 millimeters and the length of the barrel is 80 millimeters. That gives um, a piston throw of about um, one cubic inch. Because there's so much metal there, there's a lot of thermal capacity or thermal ballast in the system. That means once it's hot, it stays hot. Its temperature doesn't drop much when you um, discharge and recharge it, so you can um, batch produce things quite quickly. Secondly, the heaters, you can see two of them there wrapped around the barrel. Each of those is 200 watts, so this is a 400 watt machine. Well, if the barrel's the heart of the unit, I suppose this would be the head. This is the temperature controller, um, and it does what it says. It controls the temperature of the barrel. Very easy to use. The, um, the temperature in red that you can see there is the current temperature of the barrel, as measured by the K-sensor, sensor which is screwed into it. The green uh, number is the set temperature, the, the temperature which you want to uh, control the unit to. It's worth pointing out that this is um, a very popular unit they use throughout the world. It's a digital controller. It's very competent, very accurate. 
Now, what temperature you select depends on the plastic that you're using, its melting point, the kind of mould you're injecting into, what sort of results you've been getting at a previous temperature. You just use the green arrow keys to raise and lower the digits as though you were setting the time on a watch and then you press set and you're off and running. Very straightforward and if you always use the same plastic then uh, you may only need to set this once. The controller switches on and off the power to the heaters through this unit here which is a solid state relay. These things are amazing, this can switch 25 amps, in fact we're only switching a couple of amps um, so it's, it's got lots of headroom, it's completely silent and it doesn't wear out far better than a relay. These components are located together in this box along with the main switch with the main flex coming out the back. Everything's earthed so there's no danger there. The unit is uh, mounted above and to the side of the bottom of the injector barrel and it's put there to give plenty of good access for whatever clamping arrangements you might, might want underneath so it's uncluttered it's nice and safe from burning because obviously the barrel gets very hot very convenient. So let's have a look at how to use the machine. First a word then about plastics you can use a wide variety of plastics in this machine the only limitation would be the melting point and I guess this machine goes up to about 400 Fahrenheit something like that. What you can see here is recycled milk bottle which is HDPE and it's in two forms here one is just the sliced up shards there and the block behind is what you get uh, when you compress it in heat. So that's another little thing we've been experimenting with. Um, but you can also buy pellets. This is um, a green pellet. I don't actually know what plastic this is. It was sold to me as teddy bear stuffing. So, But I can tell you that it melts at around 130 centigrade and it makes uh, very good stuff. But you can buy a variety of plastics online. eBay for example. Um, typically by the kilogram, typically in pellet form, and you'll pay small amounts of money, um, three pounds, five pounds, somewhere around there. Polypropylene, mm, HDPE, ABS, and other plastics are available. Choose them really, either for the colour or for the characteristics, how soft, how hard they are, what temperature they melt at. Then you set that temperature, or a bit above that temperature, uh, on the controller, once it's plugged in and switched on and you wait for the barrel to warm up uh, and the temperature to be reached it takes a few minutes have your lovely assistant charge the barrel like the consummate professional he is wait for the pellets to mount the temperature to settle down and then with the mould in place underneath you're ready to pull down the lever uh, inject the plastic and then when it's full you'll see some seepage um, coming out of the, um, the uh, exit holes. Well at that point you hold the lever still for a few moments while the plastic sets uh, and then it's time to extract your new part. This is the first mould we ever made and it's not a very clever one that's why the plastic has oozed out the ends because there are huge holes which you wouldn't normally have but we learned. Top half comes, comes off nice and easily um, the side arms on this particular part are quite narrow and so we um, are going to use a, um, a tapping technique to remove it. So you just remove the flashing, um, there's the side arm, you're just going to tap it out through the hole there, plonk, and there's the part. Here's the same part made in uh, HDPE or milk bottles um, and as you can see it's actually a, a hose union a four-way hose union which I use on my allotment. This is another mould we experimented with for making wheels. It's not very well machined, we're still learning how to do that. Here's one of the wheels that we made with it. It's really only a test piece, it's not meant to be a finished part, but it's um, it taught us a lot. Here's another mould, this one's got a two-part central core so you can cast concavities and again it's the hose union but more sophisticated. So that's it, we did build our own moulding machine and it works perfectly well. But what we've learned is that making good moulds and making good parts from good moulds is a science, uh, but it's also an art. There's an awful lot of nuance in there, learning how heat is distributed, how plastic flows, where to put vents, um, how to design a mould so that it's efficient. It's a fascinating subject and we're going to continue the journey but we're going to build a new machine with more capabilities and so we're interested in selling this one. 
So let's summarize what's on offer here then. It's a 220 volt, 400 watt machine. It's got a very solid welded steel construction. It's got a stainless steel barrel for the plastic itself. It uses a solid state relay, so no noise and no wearing out. It's got a one cubic inch capacity. Comparable units cost at least a thousand pounds, and that's in the USA. In the UK, they're far more. So the question is, would you like to buy ours?